Hello, everybody. I'm Barry McAllister, the uh, video director. Was that a great slideshow that's when the mothers put together? Is that incredible? And we'll try to see about making that available on YouTube, too, or, or whatever we can, to, uh, so we can see that or, or have that available. Just very quickly, I wanted to call attention. You probably see these each year, but, uh, but let me remind you that we have the, uh, all the games on video that you can, you can purchase. You can buy one game, two games, or the whole season. Now, a lot of you have your huddle footage, but this has the play-by-play -play, uh, announcers that are on the radio. And so it, it's uh, even more exciting, and it's, uh, it captures more memories than that. There's always guys through the years that come back one year, two years, five years later saying they wish they had bought these. So I just want to give you a chance to uh, fill this out and order and tell your parents about it. There's a few down here on the corner, or you can just contact me, Barry McAllister, and we'll get you set up. So thanks a lot, and have a good night. Good evening, I've asked Patrick Wilt to give the invocation. Please bow your heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the coaches who poured their heart and soul into strengthening our football abilities, but more importantly, our ability to be strong, God-loving men. We thank our parents who gave selflessly their time, money, and energy to give us the best experience possible. We thank you for our military members serving now and previously to give us the freedoms we take for granted. We thank you for the lessons learned during this strange time of COVID and look forward to a rapid return to normal. We love you and continue to ask for your guidance, grace, and love for us. Amen. Well, good evening and, th and, and welcome to the 2021 uh, NBA football banquet. I'm pinch hitting a little bit tonight for Mr. Joya, and I know that you all are aware of the uh, personal struggle uh, and the trials and tribulations that he's going through, so I would ask you to keep him in your thoughts and prayers. Uh, I know he would appreciate it very much. Seniors, tonight's about you guys, but before we turn to you, I want to I want to thank some people who made all this possible. First and foremost, I want to start with your coaches. I've said this every year that I've been here because I, I mean it from the bottom of my heart. I think we have the best coaching staff in the state of Tennessee. I've talked to a lot of other ADs. Yeah. Um, and I don't mean that just from the standpoint of X's and O's. I, I think they're unbeatable in that regard, but I think the way they care about you guys as human beings and as young men uh, is probably the most impressive thing I've seen, and they're a pleasure to work with, and it's uh, my privilege to get to work with them, and I hope you know how lucky you are to have them as coaches. Secondly is your parents. I hope that sometime tonight, before you go to bed, that all of you will hug your parents tell them you love them. They have sacrificed so much for you. You'll never understand it until you have children of your own. But they sacrifice of their resources and of their time and their emotions, and they would never give it up. They don't regret a day of it. But it means a lot when you tell them that you love them. And this year in particular has been a really trying year for everybody, including your parents. And they've managed to keep things going as well as keep you here and, and see you through a football season. And so I want you to remember them and thank them later tonight, if you would, please. And also the people who make Friday Night Lights possible. This year it was a little more abbreviated. But every year, you know, we have people who deal with parking and tickets, press box and security and food and officials and our cheerleaders. And I don't guess we have our cheerleaders here tonight, do we? And there's so many people who make a Friday Night Lights possible. And I want to thank people like William Johnson and Jim Schlichting, who are in our facilities and maintenance area. They do so much to get everything ready. People like Mike Anderson and Frank Simpson, who are assistant athletic directors, who work really hard behind the scenes before every game. 
Amanda Dreyer, who probably passes out over 100 meal tickets to workers. Uh, Amika and David, our trainers who work so hard with you guys. Our cheerleading coaches, Emmy and Christine, and I could keep going. There are just so many people who are behind the scenes on this, and I, I know that you join me in thanking them. Guys, this has been a tough year. Football is always tough. Uh, you guys had a great season, but this was a tough year for a different reason. It's been a tough year for everybody. We're, uh, you know, we've gone through something that I hope will not recur in your lifetime. I do hope, uh, well, let me, let me say, I remember back in June, Marty and I would talk daily, if not at least weekly, and we would say, what do you think is going to happen? And we'd say, I don't know. I just don't know. I've talked to people around the state. It just doesn't look good. I don't know. And if I were a betting man at that point, I wouldn't have put a lot of money on us having much of a season, if any. The fact that we got to play the vast majority of our games, that you got to get into a state tournament, do as well as you did, you know, compared to the other kids in the United States, we really are fortunate to get to go to school each day with each other and to get to play our sports in a fairly normal setting. I'm going to say this to you. You can take a look at what's happening to you this year, and you can have an attitude that it's sad and that you're victims. Or you can have an attitude of graciousness and gratitude for what you do have and what you have been given. And if you have that second approach as you go through life and you go through tough times, that attitude will make you better men, better husbands, and better fathers. I hope that you will do that. You will be tougher for having gone through what you've gone through these past 12, 13, 14 months. You'll be stronger. The friendships that you've built are unique. You build great friendships in sports, particularly in a sport like football, but to do it under the circumstances you did it, those friendships are unbreakable. So you seniors, I want to say this to you. We love each and every one of you. I'm privileged to get to, to teach about 14 of you in my class. Some of you are in here. And we love you guys very much, and we want you to know you're always welcome back here, anytime. And we want you to go out and represent this school and your parents. Tim Corbin, who's my favorite coach, the coach of Vanderbilt baseball, and I say this over and over again because it's so true, says these players, you guys, are walking, talking billboards for your parents. You advertise them, but you also advertise these men who coached you and this school. So go out from here and remember that. Make your parents proud, make us proud. I'm really appreciative of everything that happened this year from our coaches to our parents to you guys for having a reasonably normal season. I'm proud of you for everything you did. I'm going to turn it over to Marty for the rest of the night. Thank you all for being here. Thank you, Mark. And thank you guys for being here tonight, uh, especially on uh, National Championship Night here uh, with the Zags facing Baylor. Um, thank you for joining us online, uh, those of you who are online. And, uh, this is a special night, and uh, we're here to celebrate and honor Team 122. As I was reflecting on this past season, I couldn't help but think about some of the difficulties and obstacles our team had to battle through. Here are just a few. Players had to arrive on campus at different locations wearing masks, carrying their own water bottles for hydration. Coaches escorting players to, to the soccer field, which became our new weight room and locker room. Speaking to the team in person for the first time, addressing the division that had erupted in our country and trying to predict what our season was going to be like with very few concrete answers passing out all our player gear and equipment from the soccer field, keeping players in pods during workouts in order to help with contact tracing in case someone tested positive, coaches constantly yelling the most used phrase of the year, spread out, keep your distance, players adjusting to our modified weight workouts due to not having access to, full, to a fully equipped weight room, watching one of our own 
Coach Davis show up at workouts knowing he was battling cancer. Coaches and players were spraying and wiping down equipment with sanitizer after each player used a piece of equipment. Coaches escorting players back to their designated departure locations. Adjusting our annual big red day of competition for steak and beans to the food truck from Uncle Bud's, which might not be a bad thing. Missing our team camp in Bell Buckle that has become a long-standing tradition our players look forward to attending. Our three scheduled scrimmages being canceled. Having our first two games canceled and our third game being rescheduled. Finally, when our first game did happen, Thursday pregame meals had to be adjusted. Our pregame locker room rituals had to be adjusted. Attendance to games had to be adjusted. Our team bus rides to away games had to be adjusted. And there were so many more. Yes, it was the year of adjustments, but our boys came through winning a region championship and appearing in the state semifinals. Our vision at the beginning of the year was very clear. Make it back to Cookville and win the D2 championship. Unfortunately, we were just a couple of plays away from an opportunity to fulfill that vision. Even though our season was shortened and a tremendous amount of adjustments had to be made, we were able to play the game that so many of us love. I'm a firm believer that adversity reveals true character. One of our team mottos is Proverbs 24:10. If you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. Enduring, time, en enduring tough times makes you stronger. I also believe one of a man's greatest strengths is his ability to stay. Not only stay, but to stay and fight. To fight for a cause greater than himself that can leave a legacy. I'm extremely proud of this team. I'm extremely proud of you guys for all you've done this year, for staying the course, never losing hope, and battling to the end. We had a tremendous season. Give yourself a hand. Uh, like Mark, I, I do want to thank us several people Se several people here, so please uh, stay with me on this. This, is, uh, this season could not have gone on without the, the, the help of these guys. First of all, Mr. Joya and his support and all he did uh, for us this year. Mark Tips and uh, Mike Anderson and Frank Simpson were fabulous, helping me cope through all the mitigations. Amanda Dreyer, uh, our whole administration, Robert Sawyer, Dr. Board, D Dr. Boyd, uh, just tremendously helpful. Our faculty and staff who had to take tickets and, and uh, uh, temperatures at the gates, uh, thank them uh, so much for all they did. And Mika and David for taking uh, care of you guys. Uh, we have true professionals, uh, two professional trainers. Uh, our team doctor, Dr. McGeehee, Jim Slickton, and our entire maintenance crew, our stack, stack crew, Maggie Raines, Michael Stewart, uh, we didn't use the dining hall staff as much, but we did some with Steve and Susan, but they, they're, they're awesome, always uh, helpful and, and just, just fabulous. Bobby Cushy and the finance department, the tech department led by Mark Artisan and his team, Michelle Artisan and our school nurse, uh, and Barry McAllister, who you heard from, uh, the, our video producer, Jenny Maddox and the, and the guidance department, and our broadcast cr crew uh, with Mike Martin and John Merrick and all the moms who helped with our pregame meals, uh, the, which we, you know, it was totally different. Uh, thank you so much for all you did, the hard work on that end. And the senior dinner was one of the best senior dinners we've had, even though uh, it was here, and you know, we usually do it at, a, at somebody's home. It, that, it was really fabulous, and, I, and our guys appreciate it, so thank you for, for that. Um, and to all the parents, everybody listening, uh, thank you for entrusting your son to us this year with with, uh, you know, back in last April when it all kind of went down, it, it, it didn't look good, but uh, and people, you know, there's a lot of fear and a lot of things going around, but thank you for entrusting your sons to us over the summer and, and believing in us to, to try to do all we could to um, make things 
safe and, and uh, successful. Uh, Caroline Toms for her great video that, that we saw uh, before uh, tonight's ceremony. And all the moms who set up for the banquet and uh, the moms leadership team led by Caroline Toms and Megan Fox and I think Miss Endem, uh, I'd like to call her up. She, uh, she would like to present, if I could, get Caroline and Megan Fox to come up, please. If you would, give these two ladies a hand. I'm Stephanie Endum. Most of you know me as John's mom, but everyone here knows Carolyn and Megan. They have worked so hard this year as the team football moms to coordinate us all, keep us informed, keep us excited, and did it all selflessly and with love because they love all of you and they love the school and we just appreciate them very much. So everyone took up a collection to give you a little happy, and we just wanted to say thank you. And uh, last but not least, uh, my staff, as, as Mark said, I think I have the best staff uh, any coach could could have and uh, one of the things that, that I, I feel like is our relationships with each other that, that they don't really work for me they work with me and uh, that's the kind of attitude that, that I want those guys to have and I have a special group of young men and their wives and everything that they had to go through this year uh, I really appreciate all you guys so love you guys yeah All right, uh, now for our team recognition, uh, and I saw him tonight. We have uh, one freshman player that uh, played with us this, this fall. H, would you stand up, please, sir? Give it up for Big H. H moonlighted uh, for us uh, this year. He, he played freshman and, and varsity and uh, did a really great job for us. Uh, if I could get our sophomore players to stand up and be recognized, please. Managers and players, please. Any sophomores, stand up, please. Thank you. And our junior managers and players, please stand. We are tremendously excited about uh, the upcoming season. Uh, Team 123, these guys coming back. Uh, right now, we have over 100 players on the, on the roster. Uh, we have a lot of sophomores that are going to play and a lot of guys that are, that are in the school that just decided that they want to play football. And I, I think it's, it's, a, it's a fever kind of catching on here. The culture that we've tried to create of just uh, being positive and, and, and being tough, but also just, just the love that I think that's inside this program. And uh, we're very proud that, that uh, hopefully uh, – we're going to continue this tradition uh, for many years to come. Uh, and now for my favorite part of the program uh, here is we started tradition uh, when I first got here at a banquet for every position coach to come up and talk about uh, the player that they coach. And I, th I think it's more personal and, and uh, it's really fun to hear some things that the coaches say about each player. And so we're going to call you seniors up here. Uh, for a recognition, we're going to start with Coach Chauvin. I'm going to talk about uh, all the DBs, so Cole and uh, Kendrick, Max, and Nas. Y'all want to come up here? You want them up here, Coach? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to put you on the hot seat. Yeah. So he asked me to speak first because I'm the most positive coach. Um, so. I'm going to talk about Cole first because um, he was in my, uh, my position group. So I, I wrote a little bit, 
off the cuffs, really not going to be my thing. So I'm going to read this a little bit. But Cole, uh, I've had the pleasure of coaching Cole all four of his high school years. Um, I'm not sure if that's a blessing um, or a curse for him, but I had him as a freshman basketball player too. Um, but Cole had a great career here at NBA. Um, he was thrust into the playing as a sophomore after a couple seniors got hurt late in the season. Um, he was quiet. He was nervous. Uh, but he had a little bit of savviness to his game that enabled him to, to, to jump in and play. Um, as a junior, he remained quiet um, at a position where you can't be quiet or laid back or nonchalant. Um, and I was not sure that our player-coach relationship was going to mesh well. Um, Brody was just too chill for me. Um, so I could not get a good fix on what he was thinking, um, if he knew what we were trying to accomplish. Um, it was, it was a battle. Um, but on game night, Cole was different. Cole played with passion. He played with energy. He played with the toughness. He played with a desire to win. Um, big game that stands out uh, for me in his career is the, the MUS junior, uh, MUS game junior year, the first one. We were not having a great start to our year. Um, and it really wasn't, uh, that game didn't stick out because we won or, it, you know, it changed our season. It was just watching that film, um, you could just see how emotionally invested he was. Um, I thought he was um, motivational to people around him. I think he inspired people to play hard. Um, and I think that's, you know, telling um, about who he is. By his senior year, Cole was much more vocal. He understood coverages. He understood what I wanted him to do. I thought he was ready. Unfortunately, his shoulders had other plans, um, and he was forced to miss a portion of the season. Um, but he came to practice daily, helped coach the safeties, helped build confidence in younger guys that were replacing him. I really think that he led. Um, it really um, meant, felt like it meant to me that it meant to him. He really cared about NBA, he cared about football. Um, I am as proud of him during that time as I was when he was playing. Um, Cole is, is, is an exceptional young man. Um, and a player that we're surely going to miss, and I wish him nothing uh, but the best in his future. So. Um, let's see. So unfortunately, uh, Coach Redmond couldn't be here tonight, so I'm going to speak on his behalf. He sent me some stuff to read. Um, but uh, corner is one of my favorite positions, and then I'll, I'll read his, what he said. But I, I wrote, um, I didn't spend as much time with individual with them, but corner, I think, is one of the most difficult positions to play. I think you've got to move backwards and sideways at full speed when people are running forward at full speed. Um, it's a position where you have to have a little bit of amnesia to play um, because when something goes wrong, everybody knows it. It's, it's not like... Um, being up front where you may have missed a step or missed a tackle and someone else made it behind you. If you miss a tackle in the secondary, everybody in the stands knows you missed that tackle. So this is what Coach Red asked me to read. Um, I would first like to thank all the parents for entrusting me with their boys. I know it's not easy to see your child on the receiving end of hard coaching on Friday nights. Always know that it's coming from a good place, wanting them, wanting them all to be the very best they can be on and off the field. I'm going to talk about Maxwell first. Uh, Maxwell, your commitment to be a starter for the Big Red football team was quite evident as we started our off-season workouts and summer workouts. You obviously picked up some weight and got a step faster. There's no doubt that your work ethic put you in a position to make several plays on defense this past season. As much as I enjoyed you making plays, I also enjoyed how you celebrated your teammates' success on the field. It was always genuine, entertaining, and well done. Lastly, I want to wish you the best of luck as you continue playing football at Tennessee Tech. I truly believe that you, are, you have not tapped into the very best player that you can be, and I strongly believe that you have tremendous upside as a quarterback at the collegiate level. My wish for you is that you continue to recreate yourself on and off the field. Maxwell. Nas. Um, after your 10th grade year, we went into focus mode like no other. You made it very clear that you're going to start at cornerback for the Big Red, along with taking a rigorous academic schedule which, with hopes to attend Ivy League universities after high school. Your discipline and worth ethic, along with your gift of speed and stride frequency, 
put you in a position to make several plays on defense. As much as I enjoyed your playmaking abilities in football, I am also looking forward to track and watching you have much success this spring. Lastly, I want to wish you the best of luck as you continue playing football at Princeton, and I look forward to surrounding you with the needed resources during the summer to help you reach your ultimate goal, to be a general manager for an NFL team. Kendrick, though your in injuries limited your participation in practice and games this past season, you were always engaged and wanted to help and be involved in any way possible. We, are all, we all have our roles when it comes to success of a football program, from our coaches, managers, and trainers, scout team, and injured players. Your support and constant encouragement of your teammates was consistent every day. It is my wish that you look back in your life and appreciate the gift of discipline and work ethic that was instilled in you at Montgomery Bell Academy. That gift that will inevitably be needed in your future, I can assure you that you will know how to respond when the task presents itself. Just know the University of Arizona is very lucky to have you as a student, and I look forward to hearing more about your next chapter of your life. Um, last thing he wrote was, I wish you all have the very best as you venture off to college. The next chapter of your life will be a great experience. Enjoy, and please remember that football is and will always be a very small piece of who you are. It will never define you. Always feel free to reach out and look forward to our visits in the near future. Coach Cook. Coach Cook. Uh, first off, sorry. First off, I just want to uh, thank the senior class. Um, you were the first class that I got to coach when I came to NBA. My first year here, um, I was coaching freshman football with you guys. Um, and the lessons I've learned that year, I still hold on to every day. Um, so I appreciate that. Um, now to D-line, I'll start with you, Gaw. Um, speaking on my first year, I actually, my very first practice at NBA, uh, Gaw was with me. I had to coach two kids, uh, one on O-line, one on D-line, and Gaw was one of those kids. So my first experience coaching at NBA was coaching Daniel. And I thought, man, what, what, what type of kids am I gonna be able to coach if this is one of the guys? I thought, you know, what a blessing to be at NBA if I get to coach somebody like Gaw. Um, and then he went to O-line sophomore year. Um, and then fortunately junior year, he came back to me uh, D-line. And that was one of the best years ever. Um, just a few things on Gaw. He's one of those kids who you can leave the room and you know everything right, right is gonna happen. Nothing's gonna go bad. Um, I felt that comfortable leaving uh, guys with Gaw during practice. Um, Cause I knew that they were gonna get better if he's leading the group. Um, and that's one of the reasons why he was picked as class president, because he's a guy you can trust um, above all. Um, and so, God, I really appreciate your effort this year. I appreciate you teaching the young guys, encouraging, and you're always positive. And that's something as a coach that you always want. You always want an extension of yourself, and that's something I really got this year from you. So I appreciate that. Um, now on the skaters. Uh, coachability. Coachability. That's one word that, I can, that comes to my mind when I think of uh, Mason Skeeters. Mason's one of those kids to do whatever you ask him. If you tell him to get down in a four-point stance, he'll get down in a four-point stance. If you tell him to run through this brick wall, he'll run through the brick wall. It doesn't matter what you say, Skeeters is going to do it 110%. Um, one of my favorite memories of Skeeters was this year, uh, I think it was our first game at home against Briarcrest. Um, tough environment, tough team, really good team, really good offense. Um, really good quarterback, too. And I remember all week we had practiced keeping outside leverage, keeping outside leverage. Um, and the moment came, it was third and long, and the moment came for Skeeters to get outside leverage. I'm pretty sure Jet or Wide was called. Um, and so I see Skeeters in a five-point stance. I see the quarterback roll out towards his way, and I'm thinking, all I'm thinking to myself is keep outside leverage. That's exactly what Skeeters did. He kept outside leverage. He got the sack huge down for us. They punted. We ended up winning that game. 
Um, and so just the littlest things Skeeter just pays attention to because he knows it's going to help his team in the long run. Um, so you two guys, I just really appreciate the year you've given me as a coach. Um, and all the lessons that I've learned, I'm going to keep implementing those throughout the year. So I appreciate that. Coach Mark Bailey, an offensive line, come on up, please. John, scoot a little closer. All right, there we go. Um, so, as uh, Coach Tips and Coach, you talked about it. it was definitely a crazy year. Uh, we didn't know exactly what was going to happen, um, but we did know that we were going to work hard to be ready to go whenever we were going to play, and that was the mentality of the offensive line was to work hard to be ready to go. Um, of the four guys you see standing up here, two of them are returning starters from the 2019 season, Ethan Lilly and Collier Dale. Uh, I'm going to go in alphabetical order by last name, so I'm going to talk about Collier first. Um, Collier started out solely as a defensive lineman his sophomore year. Uh, that's what he wanted to play, and that's what he's passionate about. Still a little passionate about, I think, too, as well. Um, but it was during Bell Buckle this junior year where Coach Yu and I went to him and said, we needed you to move to the offensive side of the ball. Um, I know Collier wanted help out with the team however he could, but I know he was frustrated about the move. We had conversations about it, so I know he was. Um, and I could tell early on that his heart wasn't fully into that, that move. Uh, he would work hard, but something was missing. Uh, something was still kind of holding him back. But the longer he was with us, the more he started to embrace his role as an offensive lineman. Um, as an offensive lineman, it's not about individual glory or accolades. It's about serving, fighting, and striving together as a group to help the team be successful. Collier ended up loving this position, and looking back at it, he would probably tell you this, that he would not change anything. He would do it all over again to be with us. Uh, he became a leader by how hard he worked and how, how he looked to serve those around him. Collier. Next is uh, the guy standing right to my left, John Endum. Um, even though I said that uh, we had two returning starters from the 2019 football season, uh, John actually started a couple of games at guard during his sophomore year. Um, as some of you guys might recall, he was undersized and had a hard time keeping a good base. And if you think about it, those are two terrible things to have as an offensive lineman. Um, however, he would battle like nobody else. Uh, his technique was raw, but he would go full speed all the time. Uh, I still remember plays, and, and he did this a little bit his senior too, but he would fall down on a pole and would get up and just on his knees try to block the linebacker just as the tailback would uh, pass by him. Um, so he would fall down, but he would get up and, and fight to, to, to block it. Um, you know, moving on to, to this year, we needed him to play on the offensive line as a senior kind of out of a necessity, and he brought the same tenacity, if not better, than he did his sophomore year. But this time he was bigger, faster, and stronger which made for a deadly combination. Um, I almost felt bad any time we called a play where he was going to pull the kick out of defensive end or a linebacker because I knew he was going to throw his entire body into him. And that's just who John is, just out of control. So, John Endum. <laughs> uh, next is Ethan Lilly. Um, Ethan Lilly, of course, played center for us this year and was a very solid and dependable offensive lineman. Uh, he grew so much during his time between his junior year and this past football season. Uh, this summer, the way he ran every sprint and did every drill was as if it was his last. Um, I, I think you guys on the teams knew that. Uh, during the football season, he was such a technician and always tried to hone his craft as an offensive lineman. I remember doing drills during pre-practice every day, and Ethan never grew tired of doing the same thing over and over and over again. He got so good at doing the little things that became just natural for him to, to do that in team group situations. Uh, he didn't have to think about it. Um, I also know that Ethan put a lot of time in preparing for his opponents by watching film and asking a whole bunch of questions. Uh, the transition that he made from his junior year to his senior year was nothing short of amazing. Uh, he was just an average offensive lineman as a junior year, uh, in his junior year, but he, in my opinion, he became one of the best centers in the state this past season. Um, this shows the kind of determination that his, that, the kind of determination he has as well as the heart that he has. 
with these characteristics, I know that Ethan is going to be successful in all that he does in the future. Ethan Lilly. Last, Jomo. Um, <clears throat> I know what I said about Ethan just a little bit ago and the progress that he made in between his junior and senior year was nothing short of amazing, but for Joe, it was nothing short of a miracle. Um, I, know, I know that he knows this, and I'm not trying to be mean, I'm just trying to be real, but Joe was not very good his sophomore and junior year. I think we all, we all know that. Now, he was a big kid with no real drive and tenacity, and it seemed like no matter what I tried to do to get him to go, he would never really come off the ball and fight to block people. Um, then something changed. Joe started gaining a little confidence in, in himself. Some of that, I believe, came from wrestling the, the winter before, but I also believe that part of it just came from the fact that he knew he was a senior and this was his last go-around. Um, I know that everyone on the team and the coaching staff still remembers that one workout early uh, one morning during the summer where we were running fifths and on one of the fifths Jomo was shot out of a cannon and I thought well this is not going to be sh this is not going to be long lived it'll be pretty short and then he started kind of pulling away and no, no matter what happened nobody caught up to him he kept pulling away and I remember he made the final turn and I almost started laughing hysterically because I didn't know what was going on <clears throat> but uh, we found out during that summer that wasn't a fluke Joe worked so hard and impressed us so much in the summer before the season that we knew that he was going to put himself in a position to help the team, and help the team he did. Uh, Joe did struggle from time to time, but he always worked hard and did extra after practice every single day to help himself and also to help out the team. Um, we got to the point where we could depend on Joe. If we had to run inside zone to his side or if Marcel was going to drop back, we knew that he was going to protect Marcel. Um, and it was incredible to witness that transformation that we saw in Joe this year. Jomo. One, one last thing, just real quick, before you guys step down, is um, as we, we heard, and as we all know, uh, it was such a crazy and unique year. Um, there were many disappointments along the way from not being able to do our normal summer conditioning, and of course, like Coach, you talked about not going to Bell Buckle and thinking, from, thinking that we're going to play, then not going to play, then going to play, then not going to play. I mean, even in the canceling of the Raiden game, too, um, just frustrating. Uh, but I wouldn't have traded this year for anything. Um, I'm, I'm so happy to be this. I'm so proud of you guys uh, and what you did, the attitude that you had this entire season, how hard you continued to push yourself even in the face of probably the most unprecedented adversity we've ever had here. Um, I'm always going to cherish our time together. I appreciate you guys. Thank you. Wide receivers coming up, Coach Sanders. All right, uh, Josh Moore, Will Brown, Riccadilly, Sam Banks, Bernetti, Josh Moore. I know y'all laughing because I'm, you know, I'm bad with names, and you know, I'm remembering everybody's names. You know, I, I hate this time because a lot of times we got to say goodbye, but I hate to say goodbye, but I don't want this to just be a goodbye because I want to be in, a part of their lives. I want to be there when they get married. I want to be there when they have kids. I want to be a part of their lives. And, you know, a lot of times, you know, these guys were looking at me as their heroes and saying, you know, Sam Banks would say it all the time, Ricky Dilly would say it all the time, Coach, you're my hero. But I want to turn the tables to say that these guys, these guys are my heroes. And the reason why I say this, I want to share the scripture. It says this. It says, the race is not given to the swift, but the one that endures to the end. See, a lot of times with society looks at a person saying he's fast, he's big, and he's strong. Then he's successful or he's a hero. But these guys, the reason why I love these guys is because they endured to the end. There's a lot of guys who would quit. There were a lot of guys who just didn't want to be a part of this. But the reason why these guys are my heroes is because they endured to the end. And I want to talk about Frank Bass. Frank Bass, you know, he, this was kind of like his first year playing football. He couldn't run a route to save your life. I mean, he couldn't even really catch. I mean, he couldn't do anything. But do you know the reason why I love this kid? is because he endured to the end. There's a lot of people that couldn't run routes, a lot of people could do these things, but you know why this guy's my hero? Is because instead of him quitting, he endured to the end. That's why I have so much respect for Frank Bass. I don't respect him because he couldn't catch or run a route. I respect him, why? 
because he endured to the end. He went through two a days. I yelled at him, I screamed at him, I got on him just like everybody else, but he didn't quit. But the reason why I respect this cat is because he endured to the end. Will Brown. <laughs> Will Brown's my dude, man. And the reason why Will Brown's my dude, he wasn't the fastest. He couldn't catch a cold. He couldn't do anything. He could all this stuff. But you know what he did? Is he was unselfish. When we, when we were doing, when the team was down, he was running up and down encouraging guys. And he endured to the end. He went through bail buckle three or four years, and he endured all this stuff. He didn't play, uh, he didn't even play that much. I don't care if he scored 25 touchdowns. I don't care if he scored, uh, caught 75 balls. I don't respect that. I respect Will Brown because he endured to the end. Here's a guy that didn't play a lick, but he was unselfish. He cared about his teammates. He's encouraging people in his drills. The reason why I respect this cat, you know why? Because he endured to the end. Zach Rick, Rickadilly. Pretty Ricky's what they call him. That's kind of, that's his name. He's a hard worker. I mean, he worked hard. He worked himself into a starting position. He did everything. He did everything I asked him to. I mean, I was screaming, Ricky, Lee. sometimes he'd look at me like, Coach, do you even like me? Because I wanted him to be the best. But every day he would show up to practice. He would do the drills. I would say, burst off the cut, head, chest over your knees. And every day he would work hard to do it. Even though he didn't catch that many balls, balls this year. But the one thing I respect about this cat is he endured to the end. Sam Banks. Man, Sam Banks is probably one of the craziest guys I've ever met. But the reason why he's crazy is because he's willing to put his life on the line. I mean, here's a guy who came in who was just a speed wide receiver. But I, was, I screamed at him so bad one day that I kind of cramped, I cramped in my whole body. That's how mad I was at him, mad at him. But here's the one thing I love about, about, about Sam Banks is, man, he just enjoys being around people. He enjoys being around me. And I remember this. After the, um, the, we lost the MUS, he said this with tears in his eyes. He said, Coach, I don't want this to end. And the reason why I respect Sam Banks is he endured to the end. Let me talk to one of my guys who he thinks I don't love him, but I actually love him, Brunetti. I screamed at Brunetti all the time. And the reason why I screamed at Brunetti, I knew he was gonna, he was gonna do some great things and I wanted him to stay the course. The reason why I screamed at Brunetti is because I didn't want him to stay at potential. Because all potential is, is just hidden ability. But I want to personally say in front of everybody, I know I yelled at uh, Brunetti, where's he at? I know I yelled at you all the time. I know I screamed at you. I know you was like, coach, do you even like me? But I want to look you square in your eyes, man. I love you. And the reason why I didn't want you to settle for just at being potential is because I want the world to see your ability. I didn't want to, I didn't want to see your ability be hidden. So I want to tell you, I love you. And the last person I'm going to talk about, and I'm going to sit down because I know I'm talking too long, is Josh Moore. Josh Moore is my guy, too. He did the exact same thing with the characteristics of these other guys. Is he just showed up to practice. He encouraged guys. He didn't really play that much. But the reason why I respect all these guys is because they endured to the end. That's why these guys are my heroes. Uh, tight ends, come on up. Coach Moran, next. Uh, what a strange year it has been, but I'm encouraged with the fact that we have a chance to have this banquet together and celebrate this group again. Uh, it's strange to have to do this, to do the banquet so many months after the season, but Finding the silver lining is my forte, so we're all lucky in that regard. Uh, in the past, there's always uh, been some uncertainty about where these boys would continue their educational careers. 
So the silver lining is, is having this banquet so far removed from the season is that we do know for sure where each of these young men will be attending school next fall. Uh, this group really serves as a microcosm of the different experiences that boys from MBA will, do, will have collegiately. Uh, Zach will be attending the large school at Ohio State, a place near and dear to his heart as a member of the football team. Stokes will be playing lacrosse at a smaller school at, at Gettysburg, and Stanford will be attending UNC, a place that has always been so much to him. You guys had a change in the past few days, right? Okay, good. Okay, good. You never know. Uh, let's see. Uh, before I talk about, about these three young men, I wanted to say what an honor it has been to be around this special group of boys. Watching them come together as a group of friends and as a football team has been a truly rewarding experience for me on a personal level. All right, Zach Herbstreit. Uh, freshman year, a.k.a. Baby Herb, number 16. S young Herb, sophomore year, number 40, 40 Herb. Then junior year, moderately aged Herb, 81 Herb. And then now eight Herb as a senior. Zach never comes up short when it comes to nicknames and clever sayings. Always enthusiastic about playing a sport that he loves, Zach is a joy to coach. He never missed a practice during his time with us. He loves to play football. From the gear, to the eye black, to running routes and throwing the occasional block, Zach loves this sport. He brings a level of confidence and swag to the group that his other teammates feed off. Uh, he carries a large personality and down-to-earth sense of humor that we will miss. I'll always remember the love that you had for your teammates and your passion for high school football. Good luck, Zach, in Columbus. Stokes. Stokes Myers. I remember when I first saw Stokes come out for football after his freshman season. Uh, he was with the offensive line group at the time. And what I remember thinking is, surely that little guy is in the wrong group. Uh, his older brother, Braden, was a junior tight end fullback at the time and I had no idea that they were brothers. The next year, Stokes was a tight end and was starting to fill out. He had great technique and was so coachable that I was optimistic and knew that he would help us soon. I kept throwing him in the mix with the first group as a junior. Uh, he took advantage of that opportunity and brought a level of phys uh, physicality to our offense. His versatility and being able to play multiple positions was, was uh, very valuable. Uh, missing six games with a collarbone fracture uh, was not the ideal regular season for Stokes during his senior year, but his determination to return to the team was undeniable as he got back for the playoff run. A savvy playmaker, Stokes will continue to, stand, to be a standout as he becomes part of a uh, big lacrosse program at Gettysburg. Stanford. Uh, Stanford was the epitome of a selfless teammate and our next man, next man up mentality. He was asked to change positions multiple times in his three years. He always did so with the faith that his time would come. When Stokes was injured early on in the season, uh, Stanford's number was called and he responded with diligence towards his craft and enthusiasm for his teammates. His play allowed NBA to continue to run multiple tight end sets. Uh, when I think of Stanford, it will always be epitomized by the two-point conversion against Christian Brothers to secure the regional championship. Uh, Zach scored the conversion on the shovel pass, but Stanford executed his assignment flawlessly. It was the kind of play that doesn't get your name in the paper, but that his teammates and coaches know how important a play that it was. Stanford, you're a talented young man uh, with a whole world of possibilities in front of you. No matter what you decide to do, I know you will succeed. Good luck. Hey, Herb. Hey, Herb. Appreciate it. Thank you. Coach McCorder, we got uh, Bo come on up and linebackers. Bogey. All right, I didn't make any uh, prefacing comments, and I'm not uh, very good off the cuff, so. Uh, forgive me for that. Uh, I might cry, I might laugh, I might vomit. So bear with me here. Foster Edwards, 
I've known Foster since 2010 when I coached his brother Sam on the JV lacrosse team. The image of him as a kid is true to form today. Jean shorts, skinned knees, and some shade of camouflage were as common then as they are now. So I knew when I started coaching foe in wrestling when he was a seventh grader and again in eighth grade, football and into high school, uh, football and lacrosse, that the adjective to best describe his game was tough. I think foe would tell you that his season turned around for him at the halftime of the Innsworth game. He learned that being all the way right about pre-snap reads and alignment wasn't as important as playing like his curls were on fire. So foe, as you go off to college next year, you'll be able to tell a captive audience about the season you tracked down tailbacks who were committed to Ohio State, Ohio State, South Carolina, Wisconsin, and Tennessee. There aren't too many other high school athletes in the country with those feathers in their cap. On behalf of Team 122, Foster, I would like to thank you for your consistency, your dedication to the program, and your work ethic that you've made a part of your personality. Matthew Fox. Fox, I remember talking to the other coaches about you during your seventh grade year in the Uverard Advisory when we pegged you as a future starter for the Big Red defense. You waited your sophomore year behind two returning starters, worked your way into a niche on special teams and some, some important game reps as a major backup during your junior campaign, only to run up against all of the uncertainty that COVID dumped into our laps. Early in the season, Foxy was struggling to do things that I'd seen him do before. We coaches thought it might have been the one or two extra saddlebags he was carrying around his waist. But when Fox Bashley called me one night to tell me that he'd strained his hamstring pretty good and that he'd spent a month trying to play through it, I finally understood. To add insult to injury, the hamstring strain happened during the week we were supposed to be in bell buckle, which is when I think you were going to seize your leadership position on the defense as well as establish yourself as the most physical guy on that side of the ball. Like foe, you waited your turn, and like a man, you took whatever your body, your coaches, or your schedule threw at you. I'll always remember the way you inserted into that Christian Brothers game and gave the defense a booster of energy and a little extra physicality to combat their effective running game. You helped us to win the region as much as anyone that night. Foxy, Team 122 thanks you for your dedication to the program and the way that you made practice fun for everybody. We'll miss your humor and your positive attitude as much as any of the good stuff you did between the lines. This is going to be the tough one. Nobody could talk about kickers better than Coach Davis. The tough part about kicking for Coach Davis wasn't the extra stadiums he made you hop on one foot or the balance beams he made you kick from on at summer camp. But it was the mental pretzels he liked tying, tying you into so that you'd be ready for high pressure moments on the field. While Wren will carry the torch into the next season, Andrew, take pride in the fact that you were the last kicker Joe mentored from start to finish. Like all of us, he loved your composure and your unflappability. It's the reason you earned the job after the Brentwood High game for Team 121, and you never gave it back. When you trotted onto the field for the extra point to put us up seven against BA your junior year, and when Collier Dale didn't, it was your steadiness and your snap to kick tempo that ensured we'd stayed up seven late in the game. Come to think of it off the top of my head, I can't remember you missing a single extra point while you were a starter, which might explain why you shed your sophomore moniker of Meatball for the more apropos nickname of Bogey. When you ran out there after a touchdown, we could guarantee a plus one on that scoreboard. Bogey, we'll miss your brains and your kicking prowess next season, but we'll also miss the example you made out of yourself for how to turn yourself into a football player. I think Coach Davis would say the same. Coach Brock now, Bo. Come on. I was feeling good about not getting emotional when you bring up Coach Davis, but I think that voice craft's going to help me out. 
Um, we as coaches here at NBA remind our players often that we are not necessarily the fastest or the strongest or the most athletic. And how we must separate ourselves from our opponent is not what we do, but how we do it. Control what we can control. I say that all the time. Our energy, effort, and attitude. Team 122 was one of the most hardworking teams I've ever seen work in a summer program, and it doesn't have to do with this, the situation we were in and our weight room being outside. You guys got after it. And a lot of that has to do with guys like Bo. Um, as my boys get older in life, um, several veteran parents have told me that as they get older, they tell you less and less about how their day was and what's going on. Um, my youngest son, who's nine, he doesn't stop talking. Uh, but my oldest, I can see that those things that I want to know about his life or his day, he doesn't share. And I say that to the parents, I hope that your boys have shared some stories or devotionals from some of these coaches that they share on Thursdays. And I hope that you guys let some of those roots sink down in your heart as you leave MBA. One of the quotes that stood out at the beginning of the summer that Coach you read to the guys during all this crazy times we live in. The Bible verse was 1 Samuel 16, 7. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. And that's Bo. Bo is the NBA football story. Bo knows he's not the fastest, the most athletic, or the strongest, because I told him every day. And so he always asks, Coach, what do I need to do? I said, well, if you don't know, you need to ask questions. So after about three weeks, week three of the season, when we were actually playing football, Coach Chauvin calls me in to the office and says, why is Bo asking me questions all the time? I said, if I told him to ask, if he doesn't know. He's like, well, tell him not to ask anymore. I'm kidding. Bo was always good for a question. There was maybe once all year, I think it was legit, but I'm kidding, Bo. But what Bo does have is heart, drive, and love. In today's society, social media, TV, you name it, when talking about the best football players, it's about size and speed, and numbers of stars that define athletes. Sure, those things are important, but will only get you so far in sports. I've seen this undersized young man compete on Friday nights for the Big Red as a starter or as a player. I've seen this senior also coach Sophomores like Dearis during practice when he was going to start on Friday in front of Bo. And he would work with Dearis on how to do his job, not only in practice but in games. Bo was all about the team, whether he was in or not. Bo was big red football first. And to you underclassmen that practice with Bo, I hope that you take some of that with you. That's what a legacy is. Things that you leave behind for the younger guys behind you. What I do know about Bo Wilbanks is this. He will be on time. He will work his butt off. He will push those around him to give more for the team because that's the most important. He will never, never stop fighting. He will not faint. He will give you his best, and that will be good enough. Number 29, Bo Wilbanks. Uh, the running backs, come on up. Jack.
Coach Majors couldn't be here tonight, um, but he sent me something that, that I'll read uh, that he wanted me to uh, say about these guys. But I'd like to say just real quick, uh, you're looking at two guys uh, very similar. Uh, and what I mean by that is, it's like Coach Brock said, is their heart is uh, you can't measure it. Uh, these two guys, uh, Jack, both of them battled injuries uh, this year, uh, for sure, but uh, I would take these guys to battle with anybody. Uh, they've never backed down. Uh, there's no fear in either one of them, and uh, just the epitome of a tough high school football player. Uh, that's how I feel about them. So I'll start with uh, Patrick. This is Coach Majors. I'm honored to speak about an incredible player. Pat was getting significant minutes his sophomore year until he suffered an ACL tear. In his junior year, Pat earned the starting running back spot. Pat has shown tremendous leadership throughout these years. When I came to Pat about his goals for his upcoming senior year, he stated that he wanted 1,000 yards rushing and 15 TDs. In my head, I was like, maybe we should start at 700 and work our way up. But I decided to trust what he said. I remember, I remember throughout our summer not knowing if we were going to be afforded another practice. Pat was showing his leadership on the field. He would win the majority of his reps in his group, and this type of effort rubbed off on everybody else, including me. Pat had an outstanding year and broke his rushing goal with a total of 1,085 yards, rushing with 13 total TDs. He was incredible throughout the season, and even though we fell short in the semifinal game, he left it all on the field. I'm honored to, to be his coach, and whatever his future endeavors may be, he will succeed. Patrick Will. Jack Galden. When I first came to coach the running backs in the beginning of the year, it seemed as though we had 100 backs in the backfield. As the season began, we were down to about four, and Jack was one of them. A big, reason why, a big reason to why he stayed at running back was his tenacity. Also, one of the things that stood out about Jack is how hard he worked on the field. Every day, rep after rep, he became better and better. His effort that he displayed daily was off the charts. Even though Jack didn't stay with us the whole season because he was moved to defense, his determination and effort made an impact on all his on all his teammates. He landed a spot as a key member on our special teams and had some key stops this year. When Jack got injured late in the year, he was definitely a missing piece on our special teams. I'm sad to see you go, but wherever you go, I know you will be successful. Jack Galden. Last but not least, come on up, Zach and Jack. All right, before I say anything about these, I talk about these guys all the time, and I'm sure your parents uh, know how I feel about them. If not, I'll, I'm going to let you know a little bit. Uh, but I've got to talk about how this year's uh, competition at the end of the year, end of the summer workouts, uh, it was a tie, offense and defense. We, every year we end, the, we end the summer with a competition to uh, see which side of the ball eats beans or eats steak. And at the end of this year, the competition was all tied. And somehow, Zach got on the offensive side, and Jack got on the defensive side. And I remember one of the players, Coach Chauvin, or, or Coach McCorder, reminded me, uh, and the competition was going to be just a one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, was Marcel playing quarterback? Yeah, I think, or was it, was I, it was me? I was playing quarterback. and. Uh, one of them had to play on offense, the other one had to play on defense, and we were going to give both of them a rep. And, I, and Jack ran down the, the field, made a move, and it was ugly. 
And I remember, <laughs> I remember one of the players, I don't think I've ever seen Jack run before. <laughs> and then Zach, uh, my man, alias Terrell Owens here, went deep and caught a pass and the offense won uh, this year's, for the first time in uh, eight years, I think, uh, the offense won because of Zach Thomas. Yes, the offense, yes. But uh, these guys and, and players, I hope you know, uh, I want these guys, the managers and, and even, even the underclassmen to feel like they are just as much as a part of a team as anybody else. They do what you guys do and sometimes more and you know it. And the respect I think that you have for these guys and I know that us coaching staff has for these guys is off the chart. Um, one of the best things I can say, and I know that you parents might see and you hear stories about what uh, Jack and Zach have done and, and uh, for our program and, and the leadership and the, and the, and the selflessness that they, they uh, do day in and day out. But one of the best things that, that as, a, as a head coach, when we go to away games, and I remember uh, the state championship game uh, two years ago, and it just wasn't this game, but this one sticks out just because I was so down that we, we just lost the game to Macaulay and I was the last one out of the locker room and, and the Tennessee Tech people, uh, the guy could not shut up about, he, he wanted to know uh, Jack's name. Uh, he wanted to know, you know, how do you, how do you get him to work like that? And uh, it, it was just, it was just a tremendous feeling and, and uh, just the respect uh, that we have for you guys and, and what you do for our program. And uh, it's like if, you, if the parents might know this, I know you guys, but the series MASH uh, where Radar uh, is always speaking for the current, he knows what he's going to say before he says it. That's, that's Jack and Zach. They know, what I'm gonna, uh, they know what I'm thinking and they say it before I even say it. And uh, guys, uh, we hit home runs having you a part of our program and uh, we love you. Um, I can't say I can't say enough about you. Appreciate it. All right, real, real quick, we'll get this thing land in the plane here. I uh, wanted to recognize real quick uh, some all-region selections for D2 AAA. Patrick Wilk was the co-offensive player of the year. <laughs> Lucian Bernetti, Andrew Bulgarino, Collier Dale, John Endham, Daniel Gall, Rhett Hale, Zach Herbstreet, Grayson Morgan, and Marcel Reed were all named to the all-region team. And all-state selections were Lucian Bernetti, Grayson Morgan, Marcel Reed, and Patrick Wilt. And now for our team awards. Day by day award. Our day-by-day -day award is given to the young man that embodies the credo we say before going out to play every, on Friday nights. Day-by-day, day, we get better and better. He brings this mantra to life each and every day in the way he attacks practice and works to improve on his craft. His consistent work ethic earned him a great deal of respect amongst his peers. This award goes to Sam Banks. Next award is our Big Red Award. It is given to the outstanding young man who works extremely hard by doing the deeds that are vital to our team's success. Their dedication and commitment to our program makes them irreplaceable. One of this year's recipients was the centerpiece and glue of our offensive line. The other recipient was a major force in our offense, especially inside the red zone. This year's 
award goes to Ethan Lilly and Zach Herbstreet. The Marsh Gaither Award. Marsh Gaither was a member of the class of 1997 and the 1996 football team. Marsh lost a valiant fight with cancer during his college career. Marsh exemplified the exuberance, unselfishness, and love of the team that NBA is all about. This young man thought his season was over due to a knee injury, but battled back and was able to get back on the field. This year's recipient, Jack Galder. The Chris McClure Award. Chris McClure was a longtime doctor for NBA. Dr. McClure demonstrated the dedication, loyalty, and love for the game that remains a crucial part of the NBA football program. This young man suffered an early season shoulder injury, shoulder injury that kept him out of the lineup for several games. His desire to play and compete in order to help the Big Red, Big Red win was phenomenal. This year's winner, Stokes Myers. Game Changer Award. This award goes to the young man who could impact a game at any moment. His long stride and deceptive speed made him a tough matchup for defenses in our league. He always seemed to show up in big moments and had huge plays for our team. One of the biggest moments of the year was a catch he made against Christian Brothers that enabled us to eventually win the game in the region championship. This year's winner is Lucian Brunetti. The Head Coach Award. The Head Coach Award is not given every year, but is designed to recognize an athlete that has a special impact on our team and players. This year's recipient had little or no confidence at the beginning of his high school football career. During our summer workouts, this young man made a commitment to change his attitude and work ethic. We watched his confidence grow as he began to compete at a high level. This attitude and confidence enabled him to earn a starting spot on our offensive line. The Head Coach Award goes to Joe Mo. Our defensive MVP award. One of the few returners from last year's defense, this young man, leadership was invaluable. He's a physical individual who made the hard plays for us when we needed them. He practiced with a purpose and always seemed to be around the ball when it counted. This year's defensive MVP is Dan Goff. special teams MVP. This award winner was a reliable and steady competitor for Team 122. He was rarely rattled and was always prepared for his number to be called. He was 95% accurate on his place kicking duties, making three out of four field goals and 30 out of 39 PATs. This year's special team MVP is Andrew Bogarino. The offensive MVP. The best way to define the next individual is with two words, competitor and playmaker. Whether the game was on the line and we needed a touchdown to win or hitting the crossbar with a 50-yard throw after practice, this young man wanted to win. He made tremendous plays with his legs and arms all throughout the year. This year's offensive MVP, Marcel Reed. Captain's Award. The Captain's Award is a prestigious award that goes to the young men who have displayed leadership, character, commitment to our team and program. This award epitomizes the big red motto, gentleman, scholar, athlete. And as a head coach, it's one of the most important awards there is. This year's awards go to Asir Cook, Collier Dale,
Daniel Gall, and Co. Allen. The Tommy Owen Award. The Tommy Owen Award is given to an athlete that epitomizes the ideals of character, hard work, and effort throughout the year. This year's award winner was a great leader and willing to do whatever was needed for our team's success throughout the year. That included being the only player to go both ways for us on Team 122. There was no question about his toughness and willing to do whatever we needed for our team's success. This year's Tommy Owen Award winner is John Endham. Team 122 Award. This is a special award given to the young man that puts his team first. Whether, we, whether he was in the weight room, working out in the parking garage, or going through the pain of a neck injury, you could feel his leadership at all times. He was fearless and was instrumental in, to the success of our offense. The moment was never too big. This year's Team 122 Award goes to Patrick Wilk. And our last award of the night is our Please Don't Leave Award. I'm kidding. This is, uh, I'm not kidding, but uh, Jack Edwards, fifth year letterman, and Zach Thomas, fourth year letterman, come on up. All right, if I could call the captains up there that are going to speak. Uh, come on up. Check, check. Can you all hear me all right? I think that was a yes. All right. Uh, first off, I'd like to thank everyone here tonight, um, everyone in this building and hundreds of more people that couldn't be here tonight, whether it be students, faculty, uh, other parents, grandparents, cheerleaders, alums, uh, they all bought into the NBA football program and made it such a unique experience that creates a sense of community that I've never seen before. Whether we lose in overtime or win by 40 points, everyone in the stands without hesitation comes down to the field and joins in in our family. You may not realize it until it's all over, but there's a different intensity of love and support that is felt and that is present during these times, and I'm honored to be a part of such an amazing program. The people that really start this brotherhood and unconditional camaraderie is the unbelievable coaching staff that we're blessed to have. Coach Chauvin, the defensive mastermind, taught me to become a student of the game and taught me to do things on the football field I would have never dreamed of doing. I know every player here has the same level of respect um, and appreciation for their position coach. But among the great coaching staff, Joe Davis went above and beyond for each and every player that I've ever put on an NBA football jersey. His determination and love for the game was unmatched, as he wanted to bring out the best in every life that he touched. Whether it was making a handful of guys do the splits after football workouts, or making those running backs hold that ball high and tight and running each play to perfection, Joe brought the fullest potential out of everyone and that every, each person in this room is eternally grateful for. Thank you for him. The relationships that are built amongst the players and coaches are ones that will last a lifetime. But the best part of it is it's just not all about football. Coach Uvard and the entire staff may make us better football players, but more importantly, they all make us better men. We, us captains, are honored to represent the large class of 27 seniors as that has been memorable for each and every one of us. We've all had our own journey, 
whether it's playing since seventh grade or just starting in ninth or Frank joining us this year. Nothing could have brought this, guy, this group of guys together more than NBA football. We all created an experience to look back on about nothing but memories and lifelong bonds. And to the juniors and sophomores, my words of encouragement to y'all is you get out what you put in. You have a once in a lifetime opportunity to be a part of something bigger than yourself and create a bond that'll never be broken as you will talk about your high school football days for a while. And so cherish these moments and don't let any of them slip away because you'll never know, or because before you know, it'll be gone. I'm glad I got through this whole speech without crying, but man, oh man, am I gonna miss Friday Night Lights and Tommy Owen. On behalf of 122, on, one, on behalf of Team 122, thank you, and roll red. I know there are an infinite amount of cliches that I could say about playing high school football, but playing football for NBA has truly been one of the best experiences of my life. There are so many memories that I know I will never forget, like Jomo winning a fifth on the third day of summer workouts, the phrase tempo gentlemen as Coach Majors tries to get you to isometrically curl 50 pound dumbbells. Um, this one time where we ran a play so bad that Coach Chauvin called the entire defense together to tell us that if we played like that again, he would try to eat a knife. Um, getting a two-point conversion to win the Christian Brothers game, beating Baylor in the playoffs, and there's just so many more. And I know these memories um, will never leave me and I'll cherish them forever. You'll truly never find a football program that shows their players as much love as NBA's. Most of Coach Yu's speeches, no matter how you know, out there they are, they always boil down to two words, you know, men and love. Um, NBA football has meant so much to me, and I want to thank every coach for the hours and love they've put into me and all these other seniors. Um, I want to thank my teammates for grinding it out with me because I wouldn't have wanted to do it with anyone else. In Proverbs 27, it says, as iron sharpens iron, one man sharpens another. I wouldn't, um, I believe this this verse is extremely indicative of NBA football and how the coaches run this program. I wouldn't be nearly the man I am today without NBA football. Thank you and roll red. All right, uh, I'd like to close with this. I think it's fitting and, and uh, somehow I think um, maybe Coach Davis is listening to this. Uh, I think it's will mean a lot to you guys. I, I, I kind of said in my opening statement about this was a season of adjustments, uh, which it was. We had to adjust to everything. There's a, there's a real funny story. It's, it's a great story about Joe Davis and how he is the master of adjusting to anything. In the state championship game a few years ago uh, when we were playing uh, BA, and it was one of those great games. It was that the 51 to 52. I can't remember the score now. Uh, we lost. Uh, but, but anyway, it was fourth and one uh, during the game, and I believe it was the third quarter. It was a big drive. We were scoring. We were going back and forth, and I called timeout. And if you know, if you study NBA football, you, you – you prepare for the throwback because we, we, we're, we're going to throw the throwback. We're going to make you defend the throwback. And we were in an I formation, and our fullback was a, uh, a senior, Jack Benson. And I had the great idea of they'll never, ever guess we'll throw the throwback to Jack Benson. They, they just won't. And so, so we practiced it for a week and a half, and, and man, it looked good. And Jack was like the happiest guy. You know, he, he's catching a ball, and it's a touchdown every time we, we run it in practice. And so I called timeout, and we're setting up this play. It's fourth and one. I said, they'll never know it. And, and, and Joe had told me on the sideline, they said, he said, coach. And, and Joe's tone, I just want you guys to, to just think of Joe's tone here. Coach, they're cutting the fullbacks. They're cutting the fullbacks. And I, I don't know. I don't know if it's going to be open. And I said, Joe, it's going it's to be open. Well, I, I look over and I'm talking to the whole offense and Joe has Ty Chandler over by himself and he's talking to him and I think he's just, you know, basically saying make a good fake because we're going we're gonna to throw this to Jack Benson and, 
and it's, everything's going to work out. And so timeout's over, send the team back out on, on the field. And I'm just watching Jack on this play, uh, the fullback. And our quarterback uh, makes the fake, rolls one way, and all I see is Jack being chopped down like a tree. He was cut. And I see Ty Chandler running right behind him and going past the corner, and our quarterback throws it right in Ty's hands. Touchdown, NBA. And I'm on the sideline, and I look down at Joe, and Joe's going, I'm sorry, coach, I'm sorry, I told him to do it. <laughs> and I said, Joe, you don't have to say you're sorry, is it? It's a touchdown, man, it's great. But Joe had the, the uncanny ability to, to adjust to anything. And uh, I know he had a, had a major part in a lot of you guys' lives. And uh, we sorely miss him and his, his uh, smile and his love for, for our team. And uh, I just thought that was fitting to, to end, the, end this banquet uh, with him and Team 122. And uh, I love you guys. Uh, underclassmen, uh, we're getting ready to roll red. And uh, to you seniors, um, I love you guys and appreciate all you've done for us. Um, and if you would, before you leave, and th thank you for joining us online, and thank you parents for coming. And if you would, you guys, uh, Carolyn Toms is gonna come down. They wanna just turn the chairs a certain way before you leave, so please uh, take your water bottle with you and, and, and throw it away. And uh, let, listen to Carolyn Toms tell you how to uh, set the chairs. Thank you, good night.